We're rolling through November and it's gonna get pretty warm for many of you, but I'm telling you, December in my mind, it's textbook cold. We're gonna look at the long range outlooks in this video as we head into December. We'll talk about some of the patterns, the players. We're also gonna look at some of the outliers and what they mean. An incredible stratospheric warming event is still showing up on the models today. Cold and snow are on the way for Europe and that has an impact if you look at the, some of the connections to North America. And we'll take a look at where snow is gonna to try to fall over the coming month. We're gonna start in Alaska because look how cold it is. What we're not seeing is a lot of cold air over here. That's because, well, the ocean's not quite froze up just yet. It's starting to get some ice on it, but I wanna show you the key difference across the Northern Hemisphere between last year and this year. Look how much more snow there is across the Northern Hemisphere. Not just here in North America, of course, we're dealing with the snow we just picked up here around the Great Lakes and into parts of the Appalachians and Northeast, but Look into Asia too. Look into parts of Europe last year, this year. So we had a little more snow over into this region, but look, this year is definitely a little more, a little bit further to the south on both sides of the globe. That tells me it's a little bit colder out there for sure. It may be a lot colder. And I think the models might actually be underestimating how cold December is. Today, I think they're starting to catch on to that idea. This is a look at the GFS long range. We're going to look at the European in just a second, but both models keep us cold and it keeps it active. Now, one thing I do want to point out, I think there are multiple chances for snow, even through what's left of November, as we see this battle set up here between the cold and the uh, really cold that tries to dig in by the time we get into December. This is a look at the long range European weeklies. It also has the idea that we start to see things flip. I'm backing it up and I want to start you at the end of November, we've got a trough in the west. I think that also means we're quite stormy out here. More rain and wind and snow, but the warmth that's headed for the central and eastern United States, that's going to settle down as we head into December and January. I don't know. I think maybe there's a warm-up in the beginning of January, and then we crash back down. But let's get through December first. And If anyone's telling you they know how much snow you're going to get this winter, I say impossible because there's just so many drivers out there that are just flopping all over the place and the signals aren't clear because you're getting a weak La Nina. In fact, the La Nina is probably going to go completely away. So your impacts of that are just all over the charts. And here are the players as we head into early December. What I'm seeing is this blocking pattern across parts of Greenland, a huge ridge up across Alaska, and that dives the cold air down into North America. And also a pretty decent trough developing to the northwest of Hawaii to the southwest of Alaska. In response, here's your wavy pattern that's starting to develop, right? So when that sets up in this fashion, look out for cold. One thing that I think is interesting is when you look at the North Atlantic Oscillation, it's not going to be super favorable, but it's definitely staying negative as we head into December. It's one of the teleconnections we look at. I think it's interesting to look at the week three to four temperature outlook forecast from NOAA too, the 22nd through the 5th. You're starting to see signs of that cold, especially across the northern tier of the United States. And think about it, guys. You're going to have a dividing line of warm and cold air here. Where do you think your storms are going to form? Where do you think your snow chances are going to increase? Probably north of this line. So, yeah, I mean, typically it's not going to snow in the south this time of year. Really, through the winter, it's even rare. But chances for snow, I think, are increasing across the country. And here's something that is just still showing up today. This is a textbook signal for cold Arctic air. And for this to be showing up in late November versus December 26th, it's incredible. These are temperature anomalies way up in the stratosphere. And you know, your winds are kind of circling like this now. You've disrupted what's going on in the upper levels. This generally starts to push cold south into North America. For you folks in Canada, the cold air has to come south. So I think you're gonna be cold too heading into December. At the very least, maybe no extreme warm-ups. The further north you go, you're actually going to be pushing that cold away down into parts of the lower 48. Here's a look at your day seven temperature anomalies. This would be the seven days prior to November 23rd. I think it's going to be warm across the east, cool across the west. I agree with all of this right here. We've got a, a kind of a chilly pattern setting up across the west. And it looks to me, as we head into Thanksgiving, east of the Rockies, into Canada, Warmer temperatures than average. It doesn't mean you're going to be barbecuing, which, I don't know, some of places you may end up being pretty warm. But look how the pattern starts to flip. So the seven days prior to December 5th, this looks cold, not just across the West, but look, we're spilling that East now into the Mid-South, into parts of the Midwest and the Northeast. And going ahead about a week, 
the seven days prior to the 13th, the European weeklies today, much colder in many areas. And look, I'm just, I'm not talking about just the East. This is a cold outlook for a lot of the country. And I think some of that has to do with that stratospheric warming. We're seeing the models are starting to pick up on that and they're starting to reflect it in the temperature outlooks. When you look at snowfall totals, these are seven day snow totals too prior to the date above my screen. So go back seven days before the 29th. That's when this period starts. These are using more than 50 members. We're looking at the long-term weeklies too here. So this is not going to be an exact amount. So it's going to be very flat with the snow totals. Within this, you could get a heavier band of snow, but just look where the blue is. That's where the snow is probably going to be concentrated across the West into Canada. And I think as you start to flip your pattern up, you start to open up the central plains. You start to open up the Great Lakes for some snowstorms. And then once you head into December, say around the 10th, 11th, the 12th, it's not as far south, but this is when you start to open things up for the East Coast, kind of in this region, in my opinion. And, and I, I'm going to go ahead and argue and go out on a limb with it getting as cold as it is. Watch further south as we get into the middle and the end of the month. Certainly not unprecedented for this time of year. And here is where it's turning cold, too. Europe is always a place to look. A lot of snow showing up. This is snow totals through the next 46 days. I'm not so much interested in the totals. I'm interested in how cold it's going to get. I mean, this is where we are now. Below average temperatures expected as we head toward the end of the month. Usually, that begins a flip that happens across North America. And, you know, there could even be some cold shots coming. And with this boundary setting up as we head toward the middle and end of the month, watch out. Multiple chances for snow, I think, not just through November, but really ramping up as we head into December. Now, if you're looking for snow in the short term, let's track these day-to-day -day snow and winter storm patterns that we're seeing. Certainly some active weather across the West as rain picks up out here, also into British Columbia, and we've got some more snow and rain shower activity. Yeah, warm enough that we could see a little bit of rain mixing in as this warm air from the Southwest backs uh, into the Great Lakes. Across the northeast, it stays cold. Another cold shot here, and we're watching a pretty decent low wrapping up here uh, into parts of Manitoba. That's going to drag some colder air back down into the Great Lakes. And this is where the GFS gets interesting heading into Sunday and Monday. It brings more lake effect back into the Great Lakes. And now you're wondering what's going to happen, at least I am, with this piece of energy as it slides underneath this trough. Do we get some kind of stripe of snow here? showing up from Iowa to Illinois to Ohio, Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, D.C. Hmm. Watch that right there. And then heading into next week, we're a week away. But again, it's, to me, looking active across the southwest. And it, this kind of lines up almost with what the National Weather Service is showing toward the end of the month with colder conditions generally across the northern U.S. Let's look closer at these systems, and we'll take it day by day across the west as we move through Wednesday into Thursday. Here comes the rain and the snow, too. It's going to be pretty high into the Sierra, into the Cascades, into the Northern Rockies, a little bit higher than what we've seen recently with some warmer temperatures. And then that upper low spins into the southwest. A lot of precipitation expected, I think, as we head into the first part of next week, Sunday and Monday, as this next stronger trough swings in, more wind and rain and snow. Here's a look at your temperatures today. Pretty mild, especially down into the valleys. We could get into the mid-60s, maybe even upper 60s for places like Boise, Salt Lake City. Beautiful conditions with some sunshine. Even Phoenix getting pretty toasty. Further to the east, relatively quiet across the central U.S. today. We're talking lots of sunshine as high pressure holds on. Bit of a south-southwest flow really starts to pick up as we head into Thursday and Friday. And that's going to warm your temperatures up pretty nicely. Let's push this out further in time. I want to refresh this and take a look at the early morning European. Different than the GFS we looked at. But here comes the next system that swings through. It has a bit of a different story. Right. So the GFS was trying to show some snow into Illinois and Indiana. You know, I don't know. That's one thing to watch. There's still some key differences here in the big global models. But the Europeans trying to do something even maybe a little more impressive for where you live. Here's a look at your temperatures as we head through Wednesday, climbing back up into the 60s. Beautiful temperatures and pretty comfortable for this time of year, for sure. Further to the east, some wind and some rain and even some snow mixing into the northeast downwind of the Great Lakes. That will start to settle down some, otherwise relatively quiet. Maybe a few showers skipping through West Virginia, Kentucky, heading into Saturday and into Sunday. And that expands as this warm front lifts off to the north and east through parts of southern Ontario. Cold enough, there could be some ice mixing in across Ontario, northern parts of Vermont, New Hampshire, into Maine, cold enough for all snow. 
And this is going to be a decent cold shot. Actually, your winds will be coming in more like this heading into Monday. So colder. And now we develop a little bit of lake effect behind this. And again, here's the key difference. I showed you the GFS earlier. It had that snow further south. The European, not quite the same look. It amplifies the low a little bit more. It takes it a little bit further to the north and west. But snow is in the forecast. At least it's still showing up in my mind as you get into next week. And then what happens with this system toward the end of next week? I think the models are just sniffing out this really active pattern. They don't, they don't really know what to do with it. But I'm telling you, pay attention. I'm tracking it every day, guys. I'll see you next time.